Hello, everybody. Jeff Duncan, Josh Katzenstein, where we've just watched the New Orleans Saints rally for a 21-18 victory, their first victory of the year in week two here at the Dome. And uh, look, this was kind of an ugly game, but I think the Saints were more relieved than anything else to come out with a victory. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you think about it, they had lost uh, the first two games of the year the previous four seasons, and they obviously didn't want to make it a fifth year in a row, especially going against a Browns team that hasn't won since December 24th, 2016. Obviously, they went winless last year. And, I mean, the Saints barely got away with this one. I mean, if uh, the kicker uh, for Cleveland, Zane Gonzalez, hits any of his four kicks that he missed, the Saints might have lost this one. And, uh, you know, I think Sean Payton summed it up perfectly by saying, you know, that he's not real happy. You know, he's glad they won, but they have a lot of work to do before, you know, they uh, can can really get back into that Super Bowl conversation that we were having in the offseason. Well, yeah, I think it's pretty clear right now this is not a Super Bowl team by any means. Uh, they only scored three points in the first three quarters. They put up 18 in the fourth quarter. So you have to be encouraged that the team did put it together, got its act together when they had to, and uh, did enough to get a win. But this is not a very good team they beat today, a team that finds ways to lose. And I think the Browns did that again today. Uh, but Again, there were some highlight efforts. Michael Thomas had a big game. Alvin Kamara continues to be a big-time playmaker. And the defense finally came through, although uh, it was against a team that's pretty inferior offensively. Yeah, Michael Thomas had another 12 catches today. Through two weeks, he has 28 catches, which is the most by any player in NFL history in the first two games of a season. Um, but at some point, I think you got to worry about – them not really having other guys besides Thomas and Kamara. And I think this week we saw that, you know, it was much different problems than last week against uh, the Bucks. I mean, I think it was almost like a complete role reversal for both sides. I mean, the offense, like you said, they only scored three points in the first half. You know, there was probably three plays that they should have had a touchdown. Um, and, you know, it was either miss execution, one play there were penalties, one was an underthrow from Breeze to Ted Ginn. There were two fumbles by the offense. And then the defense was actually pretty good until the fourth quarter when they let the Browns march down the field a couple times to, you know, get back in the game. Um, so, and one thing that I actually thought was really problematic, Max Unger got destroyed by a guy on the Browns who, like, I think I've never a lot even of, heard of him. I never heard of him, honestly. Um, I, I, Ogan I'm, Joby. I'm, I Ogan Joby, yeah, that's it. And I wanted to spell it with a K instead of a G. I mean, that's like, I barely knew who this guy was. And they were play, also playing without uh, Emmanuel Agba, and yet they still created a lot of pressure. They had three third down sacks on Drew Brees. Part of it was the blocking, part of it was the protection calls. And I think there's just a lot that this team needs to figure out before they play the Falcons next week. Yeah, I thought Greg Williams, defensive coordinator for the Browns, had a really good game plan. I thought they kind of outwitted the Saints uh, with their game plan, but. To be fair, I, I don't think this was a game that was won or lost on strategy. It was won or lost on execution, and the Saints just did not execute on either side of the ball uh, consistently uh, in this game. And Sean Payton and Dennis Allen, I know they'll have a lot of tape to work with this week to try and get this team back on track. And they got to get better in a hurry. They go to Atlanta next week in week three, a big NFC South showdown against their rivals. And they're going to have to play a heck of a lot better uh, then they played in the first two games that they want to win in Atlanta. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that – I don't know that their Monday meetings are going to be any more pleasant this week than they were last week. You know, they got the win, and I think they're, you know, pretty fortunate to do so and, and to escape this one because, I mean, it would have been really embarrassing to lose to this Browns team uh, just, you know, with their recent history. Um, but I, I, I think, you know – there were definitely some positive signs, and if you can look at what the defense did through the first three and a half quarters and what the offense could do in the fourth quarter, if they can find a way to get that to be a full game situation for both sides, they'd suddenly be really good, but uh, we haven't seen it yet. Well, always better to work toward improvement after a win and when you're 1-1 one and one, than if they'd have been 0-2 starting out here at the Superdome against the opposition they faced in these first two weeks. All right, that's it for Josh Kassenstein, Jeff Duncan here at the Superdome. Saints win 21-18 on to week three.